Hi, coaches. I wanted to walk you through some additional things you can do with Huddle to do some after-season analysis. And, and now might be a good time to look back on last season and evaluate how certain plays or certain combinations of plays worked for you. And you know this is primarily for youth coaches who may not have access to all of the tendency tools. But even if you're a high school coach, the tendency tools in Huddle only take you so far. And I, I like having the power of some analysis I can do outside of Huddle. And that generally means exporting things into Excel or your favorite spreadsheet program like Google Sheets so that you can do some additional analysis. And something that I started doing a couple seasons ago was evaluating the effectiveness of a play. And it's, it's too easy to look at aggregate data like average gain or loss for a play and come to some conclusions about how good a play is based on that. And there's problems there because very large numbers like a 99-yard run on a play where you run it 10 more times and it gains only one yard, you know, that looks like about a 10-yard average per play and clearly the play isn't that good. You might you may have gotten lucky. You may have had a, a bad defensive set or been playing a bad team. So something that I, that I learned to track is play effectiveness. And what you're looking at right now is the first step that you need to do. You can look at this within a game, but I'm looking right now at full season offense. And to do this all you all you have to do is over time just keep dumping all of your offensive plays from each game into um, a single playlist. So you can see right here, I've got about 402 plays for the season. And this goes from 2016 season. So, you know, everything but our jamboree. And I think one of our, uh, we had to do a play in, which wasn't, it was a Kansas plan style playoff. And it's, it's just not representative. There, Certainly we were running plays there, but the dynamic is so different in that overtime situation that I really don't want to count those. So here I've got all the plays tracked so that I can do some analysis on this. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start by going here and saying export the data to Excel. So what, what Huddle is going to do here is look at whatever set of data that you have in your current view. So if I needed to change columns and add some additional columns, I should do that. But whatever shows up here across the columns is gonna show up in that playlist. And so I'm gonna open that right now. And so here is just the raw data here in Excel. This is on a Mac. If you're on Windows, it's gonna look a little bit different, but you'll, if anything on Windows, you're gonna have even um, probably easier way to do what I'm about to do. Now, as we look here in Excel, we can see we've got all of the column headers and we should see about 402 plays or so. And if I go down and just look at the bottom, I can see 403. And if you add the column header, that looks right. And I, I do that just for QA, just to make sure that I got everything into the spreadsheet that I expected. And the next thing I want to do is I'm just going to select this whole set of data. In fact, I want to start over here. And on the Mac, it's control ship, shift uh, left arrow. I can go all the way across and then up arrow and I can get to the top quickly. And actually it's looking for blanks. This would, this would have been a lot easier. Let me do this again. I'm going to start up here. And if I go to the right, I get all the way to the top because it's trying to skip or just go to the next blank. But now if I go down, I'm going to get everything. And the first thing I like to do is format it as a table. And even though I'm not really going to use um, the table features here, you might find some value in formatting a data set like this as a table so that you could, for example, filter based on a certain play and just quickly glance at the, at the plays there or you know sort and just look at pass or run plays, for example. I think you get the point. And once I have this data in a table like this, it's gonna be really easy to go to my data menu and then summarize with a pivot table. And again, it's gonna to default to table. If you're on a Windows machine, it might look a little bit different, but if you just create a pivot table from this, you'll then be in the pivot table view. All right, so what are we gonna do here? 
Um, the reality is we're not quite ready yet because I need to go back here um, to the raw data and I need to add some data. Let's, let's talk about what it means for a play to be effective. If a play either gains four or more yards or it achieves a first down, then we'll call that effective. I say four or more yards because if you run three plays, uh, that's going to be 12 yards. That'll get you to first down without having any fourth down situations. So four yards, I think we'd all be happy with that, generally speaking, on our plays. But if you're in a fourth and one or a third and three and you get enough yardage for first down, I want to count that also. So the key column we're going to care about here is this gain loss. And so how do we, how do we turn this into a formula? Well, it's pretty simple, and so let me show you the magic formula that we're going to use here. And this is, a, this is an Excel formula, but we can break it down into pieces. Basically, we're going to call a play effective if the gain or loss is greater than or equal to the smaller or the min of either four yards or the distance to gain. Okay, and you can actually just copy that formula because Huddle keeps its column names the same. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to insert a column and I'm going to, I'm going to say effective as the column name. Okay, and now I want to go and I want to put in this formula that I just pasted. And you'll notice that it highlighted that column and that column right there. And when you do this in a table, it's going to fill in that formula all the way down to the bottom. So now we know for every given play whether it was effective or not. So let's do some spot checking. It's always good to spot check these things. So this is a pass play that was complete, but we lost two yards. Clearly that's not an effective play. False. Let's scan down here. Here's a gain of five. Um, definitely should be effective. Um, and here's a good one. Uh, the gain was three, but it was a two-point conversion. And so the yard line was three. So the distance to gain, that should, probably should be three there, but, you know, we'll take it. It works. And so I feel pretty good that this formula is working here. Okay, so let's go here into the pivot table and look at what we need to see here. Now, because I added a column, I need to refresh data, and that'll cause it to show up in my column list here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the offensive play into rows. And now you can see all of the plays here. Now, when I look at this, I can see that 46 down is going to be split up um, as a separate play from 47 down. And I'll show you how we can even deal with that. It kind of comes down to how do you want to group your play families to look at how effective a play was overall. Let's go ahead. Now we see this, you'll see this effective field here. Now I can drag this and put it below there. And I'm going to go ahead and just put ODK is a good one to put in value. And the reason is, is that'll just give us a count. Okay, so that gives us a count for each play of how many were effective and not effective. So let me go ahead and zoom in here so we can see things a little bit more. I want to go to 200%. So if we look at 28 buck, which is buck sweep to the right, 17 out of 30 times it was not effective, 13 times it was. You know, not a great play. Trap, on the other hand, 6 out of 8. That's really good. A play that's getting 60, 70, 80% effectiveness, that's, that's going to be a good play. Now, it wasn't as effective running to the right as it was to the left, but it's still, it's still pretty good. All right, so we're getting there. We're getting to some data that's going to help us. I can at least spot check this. But what if I want to really show something like um, percentage of total? Now, if you're on... Excel for Windows, I think you have better support for this. I think you can do percent total of parent, but fortunately there's another way that we can do this. I'm going to pull this effective column up into columns here, and you're going to see that it's going to show, why is this not moving? There we go. Now we're seeing false and true, 
And if I now show data as percentage of the row, we're going to start seeing some pretty good data here. Okay, so let's take a take a gander. So if I look at tackle trap, for example, two thirds of the time it wasn't effective, one third it was. Okay, so now we're getting some better data. Let's go back to that trap play, and yeah, this is looking, this is looking right. Okay, so we're getting there now. I might, you know, I'm not presenting a formal report. I don't need to send this spreadsheet to everybody. This is for my own analysis. So I might be spending more time just looking at the the data, but I may want to at least fold together my, um, you know, my plays running left and right. And some might argue, well, just in huddle, just track play direction and use the base play name. And that would be an easier way to do this. It's not hard to do after the fact either. So if I go over here and I'm going to go insert here and I'll say base play and we're going to add a new a new column. And this is, you know, we have some code names for our past plays. This is really only going to work for our running plays that have a series and a whole number. But that's okay because I'm right now, let's say maybe I'm, I'm only just looking at, um, I'm only looking at my, um, my running plays. So again, another formula here. And let's kind of walk through this here. It e I want to basically truncate off the first three characters of the play. Okay. And now I'm going to see trap, lead, belly, you know, punts getting truncated. I could make it smarter. In fact, I did make it a little smarter when I did this officially for my team, but um, this is going to service just fine right now, as you'll see. So if we go over here, and I need to refresh the data again, and I'm going to bring base play in. And because I'm grouping by the base play, I'm now seeing some pretty interesting things because I get to still see it split out by the left and right versions of it. But I can even go in here and do automatic subtotals and I'll even get an aggregate percentage for the full play. So even though I'm doing some silly stuff that's making my uh, other pass plays not, you know, not look right and looks like the waggle gold, which is our waggle to the left, it's still, it's still use, usable and useful for me. Now, once I've done this work, I could even say, what if I only want to see my running plays? I can drag the play type into a filter and come over here and say, run plays only. And now I'm only seeing my running plays. I could even throw off offensive play and just get a really quick look here at you know which ones are doing really well jet really good we ran actually ran power jet a lot more than we ran jet but jet was a good play for us last year um, i may want to see the number of times that i ran it just to do a sanity check for it but there's some other plays uh that you know tackle trap for example which just did not work well for us trap was a great play um, our lead play was pretty good. I would probably group jet lead and lead together, um, but lead would be out of our normal set without jet motion, and jet is when we're faking the jet sweep. We struggled a little bit with that, but we also did that partly to keep the secondary and linebackers from flowing too hard because we knew they had to defend that B-gap play. Um, down power was good. Um, counter crisscross was really good. And our bill play, which is our down sweep, was probably better than we thought it was um, throughout the season. Now, you might um, even, if you're going to, if I was going to prepare a report for somebody, I might still want to get a play count in there. And so I might add in um, another version of this where I'm actually showing the count. See, I'm, I did percentage there before, but now I could see 
how many times did I run that play? Okay, like, like this play here, lead, we ran 55 times and it was about effective about half the time. You know, that's not, I don't think that's good enough. I think I want to, for, for a play to be good, I want to be 60, 70 percent. Um, but it's not bad. Uh, I could then take, I could do some sorting in here, but something I like to do is just take the raw data, copy it, go to a new table, and then do paste special and paste the values. And now I have some data that I can mess with a little bit more. Um, I can get rid of this column here. I know that this is the um, total count. So I don't care about these other count columns. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Um, and I know that these two are percentages. Okay, I have no idea how that happened. Format cells, percentage, I don't need to. All right, that's a little bit better. So, and I might even rename these columns. And now that I've got all this data, I can format as a, as a table again. Oops. And so I know from, you know, that not effective, effective. And because I know that effective is, you know, one minus the other one, maybe some of you are math teachers out there, I can delete that. And now I can sort descending. And I get a really good view. And I might de delete. This is one where there was just an error because maybe the play wasn't filled in. That's when we're kneeling. Don't care about that. These are probably, you know, you're going to get some miss appropriated data, um, like a pass play that was mischaracterized as a run because of a scramble. And I know this was punt, so I'm going to kill that. And I'm going to kill the grand total. Although that's kind of interesting. You can see 320 plays that I'm tracking that are run plays, and I was about 49.4% effective. So the plays below that line were below average. The plays above were above average. And there are some that were especially good. Obviously, Jet, we were a Jet team last year, and we exploited that quite a bit. We had a special back, and we got pretty good at blocking it. And I think we're going to get even better this year. So we want to build on that success. We're going to keep going with some of those Jet and Rocket schemes, um, but have some ways to attack up the middle as well. Okay. Well, I hope this helps. My goal is to show you how to quickly throw data into Excel and, and with a little bit of formula work and, you know, don't feel bad Googling for how do I do this or that because that's exactly how I get to the point of being able to do these things. I can't remember all the formulas and how to do things, but learning how to format as a table and learning how to play with pivot tables can be a very powerful tool for you. I'll see you next time.